What's up guys, I'm DK Wrestler and in today's video is a brand new edition of Cop Up or Pass Up on the 2023 New York Comic Con exclusive pops. So let's get right to it. So for those brand new to the channel, Cop Up or Pass Up is a series where I look at a certain set of exclusives, so in this case New York Comic Con, and determine via the detail, my own personal reaction, and the overall hype on social media from you, the Funko Fanatics, on whether these items are worth a cop or a pass as terms to buying them the day of release. And if you guys are wondering why I haven't included the other items like sodas and Blockbuster Rewind and all that, and that's because a future video, which I believe will release tomorrow, on the worst to best New York Comic Con 2023 exclusives is gonna happen, so I'm gonna include them then and do just pops for this cop up or pass up video. Which I'm gonna go in the order that Tristan from Top Pops had presented these pops on his channel. So the first one we're gonna be looking at is the Owl Bear from Dungeons and Dragons Honor Amongst Thieves. Pass. The reason I'm saying pass is because first off, this is Dungeons and Dragons the movie and not the games which a lot of people do like the Comic-Con exclusive pops for. And although this is really cool because it's white and not brown like the NFT pop, I think also a huge missed opportunity is that this should have been a flocked figure. So I feel like there are people that are going to buy this, but not a lot of. So that's why it's a pass for right now. Next up, we have Spangler Spirit from Ghostbusters Afterlife. Now this one's a little weird to say considering that, I mean, it's something new for the lineup, but at the same time, Ghostbusters Afterlife was released like a year ago and there was a ton of exclusives then. Why didn't it release then and why is it releasing now when no one's really talking about the movie? The Key Demon from Insidious The Last Key, Cop. I say this is a cop considering that this is something entirely new for horror movie fans. And especially with a popular series like Insidious, I think it's well overdue that they finally get their own Funko Pops. And although it isn't exactly the key demon I was thinking of, it's still cool that Insidious is getting recognition from Funko. And I think a lot of people are going to get it, let's say, on the Funko website rather than the eBay site. Which I still don't know why Funko has the eBay site to begin with. Next up is Ray Filet from TMS. TMNT Mutant Mayhem Cop. One of the biggest reasons is that throughout the entire TMNT lineup, not just the movie and the comics and the games and stuff like that, is that there's never been a Ray Filet Funko Pop. So this is the first and only time at the moment of this video being recorded that you can get a Ray Filet Pop. The voice actor is Post Malone, so that's another reason because if you're a fan of Post Malone, maybe this can be like a bonus set to your Post Malone collection. So really cool detail. Definitely have a nice personal reaction towards it, and I know a lot of people are high for this pop. Next up is Harley Quinn winking for the Warner Brothers 100 set, pass. There's just so many Harley Quinn pops at this point. Unless you are a mega fan of Harley Quinn, what's even the point of getting this? If you're a casual fan, you probably would have gotten the Suicide Squad one that came out in 2016 most likely. Next up is Big Barda from the Justice League, pass. Although this is really cool and I'm loving these obscure DC comic characters, especially for the Justice League, I just find that most of the time when we get these Comic-Con releases, they just end up sitting on shelves. So why buy it now when you can probably wait a month or two, maybe even three, for there to be more of a clearance price to buy it at a lower price then? Next up is the Glow in the Dark Toxic Avenger. Cop. This pop is really cool. Whether it's glow in the dark or not, there is a lot of cool details with it, especially with the head sculpt. People are super hyped for it. And I mean, personally me, I think it's pretty cool, especially with the glow in the dark aspect being green and that being one of the best colors when it comes to that specification. Next up is the High Evolutionary from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Pass. Although this is really cool and that it is something very refreshing for Guardians 3 instead of, let's say, a glow-in-the-dark Star-Lord. There's something about this where I feel, because there are so many pops in the Guardians 3 lineup, that I'm not sure if a lot of people are going to be wanting to get this, although I think this is the only way you can get a high evolutionary pop overall, just like how I mentioned about Ray Filet for TMNT. So maybe if you are a fan of that character, this is the way to get it, because who knows when a comic book version is going to come out. Next up is the Goblin Queen from X-Men 97 pass. Although this is a pretty unique pop, it is kind of the trend that I mentioned about with Big Barda and how they make some of these kind of obscure 
superhero or super villain pops for the comic book lineups and they just end up sitting on shelves and we even seen this for Marvel last con at San Diego Comic Con with Lilith so I feel like the Goblin Queen is probably going to follow that same trend unfortunately although the X-Men 97 lineup has been pretty banger thus far especially that Funko Soda six pack that just released next up is the Captain America pop classics pass there is so many pop classics at this point and especially so many pop classics that just don't feel like it is a classic pop even though this is the original molding of Captain America and it looks a lot cleaner it's not what it should be it should be vaulted pops that they haven't made like like example there was the Lotso from WonderCon which made sense because we haven't gotten that Lotso in 10 years while Funko still produces Captain America so unless you really want the pin the coin and the card that goes along with it with the tin casing you're better off finding the regular version of this pop even if it's reproduced on the secondary market for a much cheaper price next up is the Looney Tunes Harry Potter crossover pops pass although this is better than what I expected there's just too many mashup pops at this point I mean we it was cool at first when we had like the Looney Tunes Scooby-Doo mashup and then they started doing these weird mashups like Looney Tunes and Elf and then now there's even the NFT set coming out next week of Looney Tunes and other Warner Brothers properties so there's just so many at this point but unless you are a mega Harry Potter fan or maybe you are a mega Looney Tunes fan and it's kind of a bonus set I don't see the casual person wanting to get these pops. Next up is Dark Magician Girl from Yu-Gi-Oh! Cop. This may be more towards my personal reaction because this is my one and only need from this con, but at the same time, this Dark Magician Girl, if you had never gotten the original one, is a way better looking pop as terms of the base and the posing, so I feel like this will sell well, but I'm not entirely sure if it will actually sell out because we've already seen a Dark Magician Girl pop and that it's not a brand new dual monster, so I'm going to say cop for right now, but I will not be surprised if this does not sell out. Next up is Ichigo from Bleach Pass. I feel with this pop, unless you do collect just Bleach Pops, if you're casually collecting them, I don't think this is a need because I feel like we've already seen better Ichigo Pops than what we have here for near Comic-Con 2023. So I feel like this is something you could pick up later on, even though anime does sell pretty well. Next up are both the Inuasha and Shippo on Horse for Inuasha Pass. Now, although Inuasha is such an underrated anime and that there are some people that buy the pops, we've even seen with like the last convention that even with newer characters, or at least maybe variants of characters we barely get, that that pop kind of sat on shelves. And I'm not sure how these pops are going to sell either. I don't exactly know how to really predict this one and whether it will sell out or not. So pass up for right now. The Diamond Collection Inner Eight Gates Might Guy. That's a tongue twister and a half. Pass. The only reason I'm saying pass which is kind of stupid for me to say considering that this most likely will be 3,000 piece because it's a pop and bag it's because it's a pop and bag not a lot of pop and bag bundles have been selling out as of late especially with that $120 US price point where the only reason you're getting it in the first place is the pops so you're better off just getting this pop maybe going on the secondary market for paying $30 less let's say for $90 for the pop itself instead of having to pay so much for the bag all also, the Monkey D. Luffy Pop Wanted poster from One Piece. Cop. Yeah, this thing is definitely a cop. One Piece pops sell like hotcakes no matter what it is. Whether it is the rides we have gotten near the end of last year into this year or the wanted posters we had gotten since San Diego Comic-Con a couple of months ago. And I mean, that thing sold out. So with a character like Luffy, who is the main character, this thing is probably going to sell way more than the Goldie Roger one from the last con. So I feel like this is a definite cop. And especially if you're doing it just to sell it, then yeah, because if you can get it at retail price and then sell it for a lot, yeah, it's worth getting right now and not waiting on it. And I guess as I was editing the video, I realized I forgot to add the Demon Slayer 2-pack, and I'm going to say pass. Reason being is that there's literally commons that look identical to this, except without the mask. So this is the case of, if you don't have the commons, get the 2-pack. But if you already have those two commons, I really don't think it's necessary to get the 2-pack. No heart with book from Care Bears. 
cop. The reason I'm saying this is a cop is considering this is the first pop in the Care Bears lineup that isn't a Care Bear. So it's really interesting to see that Funko is going down this route now because I feel like it's a little bit long overdue and I feel like this is a kind of dark horse pop in terms of this con where I feel like it may sell out. So if you don't get it now, then I feel like it may be worth a decent amount of money down the line as terms of secondary market. Indiana Jones with snakes. Now, although this is really cool and they really executed it more than what we probably expected it to be, I just feel like when it comes to Indiana Jones pops now and they created that boulder escape scene, what pop are they going to make now that's going to exceed that pop? I don't think any pop is going to exceed what may be the greatest moment in not only Indiana Jones, but one of the greatest moments in movie history. So I feel like this is something that people are going to wait on before actually buying it at the regular price. Darth Maul from Star Wars The Clone Wars. Now, this is weird to say pass because a lot of people are really hyped for this pop and it does have some cool details, although it's not exactly the Darth Maul with the cybernetic legs that I was hoping for, it's still a pretty decent pop, but because it's being shared with a retailer like Target, you know that this is going to be well masked, overproduced, and will flood the shelves at Target to the point where they will have a clearance price on it at some point. So don't get it right now, wait on this pop. Garfield with the cauldron. Pass. This one's all right, but I feel like there were better Garfield pops and there will be better Garfield pops when you have like the OG ones and then eventually they will have to make a Garfield with a uh, lasagna with them. So I feel like right now this is just holiday based considering that New York Comic Con is close to Halloween. So I feel like this is one that's going to not sell out for sure on the Funko website when New York Comic Con happens, although I will be surprised if it does. The McNugget with Pails from McDonald's. Pass. Although I do believe that this may be one of, if not the best McNugget pop that Funko has done yet for Comic-Con, I feel that this is really directed towards, let's say, 90s kids growing up in the 2000s when these had came out. I feel like if you're older than that, you're not gonna wanna get it, and I feel like if you're younger than that, then you might not wanna get it. It is literally directed towards a certain audience, so I feel like there will be a lot, and it will sell decently, and I think it's gonna be one of those items that might not actually sell out that day. Jordy LaFour from Star Trek. Pass. Although this is really cool and it's a new character for the lineup, I believe, and it's not just like a Spock, there's something about this that I feel like it's going to be one of those pops again where it might actually sit on the site or sit on the shelf uh, being shared with FYE. So I don't know how this pop is going to sell. The Polly Pigeon and Pizza Rat Pops. Pass. Now, first of all, these are just New York Comic Con mascots, so not a lot of people are going to be interested in them, and especially these are no piece count Polly Pigeon and Pizza Rats, unlike some of the ones we have seen in the past. If they were limited piece counts, I would definitely say cop. Then we got ourselves the glow in the dark and metallic 1000 piece heavy metal mascots. Cop. This is a definite cop because of the fact that it is limited piece counts. Even though they are Funko made characters and not certain IPs, all of them are very unique with their own different style and especially with the glow in the dark specification. Really cool names added to it. So if it's something that you're in the booth for and it gives you that memory of being at the booth, these are definite pickups in my opinion and they will be worth a decent amount of money. Let's say even one year from now when we're talking about 2024 New York Comic Con. And last but not least, least we have both the Freddy Bones Pops, both non-black light and the 1000 piece black light cop. These are both some pretty cool pops, especially the black light version, which the colors look amazing. But even the regular one is cool too, with the regular color of the skull and the whole outfit and everything. I think this is a really unique Freddy Funko. And that's coming from a guy who doesn't really like Freddy Funko pops all that well. So I feel like this is a really cool piece to get, not just because of the theme of Halloween, but just as a cool pop to add to your collection. Anyways, guys, that's gonna be the end of today's video. If you enjoyed today's cop up or pass up on New York Comic Con 2023 exclusive pops. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think is a cop or a pass, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. One, two, three, I'm out of here.